Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. There have been many different studies on how we can effectively share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ with our generation. And in all those studies, there is one common denominator, and it's this, that the most effective means of sharing the gospel is through what is called the oikos. Now, one's oikos is uh, basically one's extended family. The word oikos is a Greek word meaning household. When you study the scriptures, you see that often people share the gospel most effectively with those that they were closest to. For example, Andrew brought his brother Peter to Jesus. Philip brought his friend Nathaniel. Matthew, when he was saved, he threw a party that Jesus was at and all his tax collector friends were there. Then we go over to the Acts of the Apostles and we see that this principle continues throughout the Acts of the Apostles. For example, when Lydia got saved, it wasn't just Lydia, but her household. The same with the Philippian jailer and also with Cornelius. Now, what all this tells us is that missions begins on our doorstep. Whilst we're called to go into all the world and preach the gospel, we need to begin at home. And God has given to us a group of somewhere between 6 to 12 people that we would see on a regular basis, such as friends, neighbors, work associates. And it's these that God has called us first to minister the love and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and thank you for joining us. Phil here along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And over the past few days, we've been looking at the subject of stewardship, which Ken has defined as we possess, but we do not own. He's also said that we haven't been created to own, but to manage. Whatever we try to own ends up owning us. And we've talked about stewardship over a number of things like time, money, our bodies, gifts. So what else have we been made stewards of, Ken? Is there anything else left? (laughs) You know, we certainly looked at a lot of things this week, haven't we, Phil? But uh, there is one area that I want to share today, and that's very much upon my heart, and that is our stewardship regarding the Word of God. Now, it's a big subject, and I, th- I think we can look at it in two parts. First of all, there's a whole thing of being a custodian of the Bible itself. Um, in Paul's epistle to Timothy, you know, who was a young minister, of course, in chapter 3 and verse 15, he referred to the church as the pillar and ground of of the truth. In other words, the church is the body into which God has deposited his word for safekeeping. So would you say that that responsibility lies with the church as a whole, the group, or with those who've been called to teach the Bible, uh, people like yourself, for example? I think both are true. Uh, you know, every generation is called to look after the truth and to defend it and to protect it so that we can pass it on like a baton in a, in a relay race, you know, to the next generation that's uh, up and coming. Now, now some people are specifically called to defend the faith. You know, there are those that are very well versed in apologetics, mm. uh, and they're they're good at going in and defending those kind of issues like uh, creation against evolution and so on. Um, now, I would I would say if we're not scientists, we probably would find ourselves out of our depth if we try to. You know, engage on the same level. There are people in the body of Christ that can well look after those areas. I think a good example, you think of someone like Ravi Zacharias and think, oh, there's there's no way I could get up and (laughs) answer the questions in the way that he does. Yeah. What he says makes perfect sense, but he's called to that and God has gifted him for that. Absolutely. But, you know, of course, in another sense, you know, we we are all called to defend the faith. Uh, Some people are called to do that in the pulpit by, um, you know, addressing false teachings that are coming into the body of Christ, heresies uh, that are circulating so that the people of God are are protected from uh, the wrong kind of information. But I guess in 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 a sense, in a general way, we're all equipped to some level that we can stand up and speak for the Word of God when we see it being undermined or falsely represented. Mm, that often requires a, a lot of wisdom as well and you know, to seek God on those things. But you mentioned there are two parts to the stewardship of the Word. What's the other side? Well, of course, we all have a responsibility to take the gospel to the world. Um, Somebody said the Great Commission was not a great suggestion. Uh, We've been commissioned to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every uh, creature, every living being. And, uh, you know, God has said that um, uh, that's a responsibility 
which we have to take seriously in our generation. Mm. Um, somebody put it this way, the last commission is to be our first priority. I think it's funny whenever you hear people say, oh, I just don't know what God wants me to do with my life. Well, there it is. <laughs> you know, that, that, that expresses itself There's in a, one thing. In a yeah. lot of different ways. But that's the core of why we're here, why God has called us to be saved is to do the Great Commission. To then There's two sides, preach the gospel and make disciples. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of ways that we can do that. But if you don't have clarity, get about doing that with those around you. Like you said before, uh, was it Oikos? The Oikos principle, those who, those who are around you, your family, yeah. your friends. So, That's right. And, and, and the exciting thing, Phil, is that uh, we're living in an age or a generation where um, – no other generation has been like this generation in that respect that we have actually the possibility and the means of fulfilling the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand what's involved to fulfill that. We understand what groups have not yet been reached and we can, uh, you know, concentrate our effort on those, those groups and we can finish the unfinished task in our lifetime. That's something that not I'm saying, but uh, missiologists and strategists are saying that, that we mm -hmm. actually are the generation that has the means and the will to fulfill the Great Commission. And another exciting thing is that, you know, in generations in the past, there was almost like a competition in the Great Commission. Um, you know, maybe one church would plant a church in a particular village in, in, in some far off third world country, and another denomination would want its brand to come <laughs> alongside and compete. But, but we're not looking at the Great Commission like that now, where missiologists are getting together and trying to strategize how we can work together to effectively fulfill the Great Commission in our time. Mm, it's fantastic to see. I think one of the mistakes that we can make, though, is if we think that if we can't go to the nations, you know, I'm just here at my place in my town, so, I, you know, I'd love to go and do some sort of mission work, but that's not actually what mission work is. It starts here at home. Yeah, I think that's a valid point. Uh, even when you look at overseas missions work, those that go overseas depend very heavily upon those at home supporting them mm. financially, prayerfully, mm. keeping in touch with them and... Uh, encouraging being, them. Yeah, encouraging them, yeah. being resourceful to them in many ways. We've seen this certainly in our own missions in our own local church. I often go across to Africa, but I'm totally conscious, Phil, that I've got a whole team behind me that have resourced this and made it all possible. And while we're over there, they're praying for us for the success of that mission. So it's no way, you know, kind of like just a select few that are involved with missions. We're all involved at some level, whether it's going or giving or praying, we're all involved. But as you say, bringing it back to a personal level, missions does begin right here on our own doorstep with our families, our loved ones, our neighbours, our work associates. And, uh, you know, some people might think, well, I don't know much about the Bible. I don't know where I would start to share the scriptures with them. But the good thing is that we all have a story to tell. Mm. If anybody is wanting to know, how, how can I share my testimony? Where do I begin with that? I always say break it down into three parts. Make it very simple. Write out a testimony that you can share in 60 seconds if you need to because sometimes that might be the only opportunity we get yeah. is 60 seconds. And the three parts are these. Number one, my life before I became a Christian. Okay, so describe briefly you know, what your life was like before you came to Christ. Number two, how I became a Christian. And in that, of course, you're going to share the gospel, the good news that you heard about Jesus dying in your place and you putting your trust in him uh, and that resulting in you being born again. And then number three, my life since I become a Christian. Mm. The change that that has brought, the transformation that God has brought your way since uh, you've put your life in his hands. Mm. And uh, a good place to finish, actually, because if we truly understand that we are stewards that we don't really own anything, and including our time, our very lives, that God has given it all to us, then we're going to be motivated much more in those interactions that we have every day to share that story, that story of transformation that God has had in our lives. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of our series this week. Hope you can join us next week when we start a brand new one. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 